Hey, Jen. Hey, Ben. Hey, Jen. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself asking, what, who, how long? Uh, I sure do, Ben. Jen. Yes, Ben. Can I ask you again? <laughs> sure, Ben. Do you ever ask yourself about that about PFO? You know, I sure do, Ben. What? <laughs> I do. And then I remember two things. The first thing is our mission statement. Playing for Others provides a space for teens to explore and answer the questions, who am I and how will I give of that, through programming in personal development, service, and the arts. A great mission statement answers the what, the who, and the how. <laughs> Come on. That seems like... Really long, kind of tough to remember. What's the why? Well, I'm glad you asked, Ben, because that's the second thing to remember, which is our vision statement. To empower teens to make a significant difference with their lives for the rest of their lives. A great vision statement is short, succinct, and easy to remember. Boom! <laughs> easy, dunzo. Hey, Anna, <laughs> can I ask you something? You can. Hey, <laughs> what is PFO? Hey, uh, <laughs> ask me what PFO is. Okay, wait, what is PFO? It's a nonprofit that empowers teens to make significant difference with their lives for the rest of their lives. And how do you do that, Ben? Well... Here's where you can talk about a specific program component that you're passionate about. Let me give you some examples. Making a difference in the world is about practicing philanthropy, the giving of time, talent, and treasure. Teens in PFO give of each of these. For time, you could talk about the buddy program or serving in the leadership position. For talent, you could talk about committees or heartbeats. And for treasure, you can talk about the present program. So when somebody asks you, what is PFO, you can say, a nonprofit that empowers teens to make a significant difference for the rest of their lives. No, 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 no. To make significant difference with their lives for the rest of their lives. You guys are going to be much better parents. And let me tell you just how we do it. Well, the buddy program is really great. Oh, wow, that's really good. Oh, yeah. Okay, anybody who knows me knows I cry. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to really try. I'm really going to try to do this without crying. Um, I feel like we have, my family has a unique perspective on PFO and the buddy program. Um, we started with the program in 2008 with my little girl, Shaquay, who had cerebral palsy. And so, you know, it's so amazing to think that as a parent of a child with a disability that she was actually going to be able to engage teenagers and be with typical developing peers and really have that experience. And it has been amazing because when we talk about her, her buddies over the years, or her teens over the years, she still loves them, she still laughs and enjoys that time. And, you know, over that time, Zaria, who is one of the teens, um, and my daughter also, decided that this is what she wanted to do. And I think, you know, it was very important for Zaria because what we found was that even though she's the big sister, she was always in Shaquay's shadow. Mm -hmm. So we watched her grow and have this amazing experience. And, you know, one of the things Jim mentioned up here at the very beginning was the why. And many of us as adults, we now can look back at our life and start to think about why we do what we do, why we're in the field that we're in. And I think you as teens have a unique perspective now because you get to think about your why and what you want to do with it. And you know, me and my husband talk about this all the time, that we are extremely grateful for this program because what it does, it lets us know that when we're old, and we're trying to figure out what's going to happen with my daughter, that there will be teams like you who are running our government, who are making decisions, doctors and lawyers, and so people in general with disabilities will be in a better place. So thank you for learning your why now. Right, that you saw all the kids saying how they felt about PFO. I mean, there's not much to say, but I will try to give our perspective and I try to illustrate the journey that we have been um, uh, since we came to Charlotte two, year, uh, two years ago. As you know, we are immigrants and um, Sonia was born in Brazil. 
Julian in Canada. And uh, uh, we really want to, about three years ago when we moved to Charlotte, we really want to find uh, a home, a place that we can also be part of the community, not only receiving, but also giving, because uh, that's the nature of uh, our culture. Uh, we Brazilians, we really want to give, we want to party. And, so, <laughs> and then, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, two years ago, uh, Sonia got a call from uh, Zoe, uh, one of the members here, I don't know if she's here, but uh, uh, Sonia got engaged in PFO, and uh, we started the journey, right? And uh, uh, one thing that we, we started finding is uh, the, the values that PFO brought through Sonia is similar to what we want to give to them, right? And uh, that was a perfect merit. We saw um, uh, Sonia growing a lot, not only because she became, you know, uh, almost, you know, uh, 16, 15, but also because of the PFO experience. And then Juliana came on board uh, and, uh, uh, you know, she also developed, uh, you saw her sing here, I never thought that she would sing, although, I mean, she has a little bit of uh, Beatrice's artistic <laughs> talent. So, uh, you know, it's amazing to see them growing up and then understanding and uh, all the conversation that, that, that they have with us among their friends. It's, you know, it's awesome. It's also um, always based on the values that Beatrice and I try to give to them. So, uh, what we see is really an empowerment, right? Uh, the kids here, as you saw in the video, and you see in their smile, their face, uh, even for those uh, that on after uh, the PFO, uh, they, they felt empowered to carry those values that, you know, I believe that your family carries these as well. So, I mean, that's a space, uh, as we parents, we see a great value because, uh, as Beatrice can say, uh, uh, you need a village in order to raise your kids. And for me, that's the village, right? Uh, we are not raising them by ourselves. We need people around and all the kids, uh, uh, all the teenagers, you know, adults uh, to also share the same values. So, you know, ta talking about, um, talking about uh, PFO, uh, I just want to go back to where it started. And I remember the interview process for both Sonia and Juliana, and then we came in, we went through, you know, all the rooms. And at the end, we, we saw Jan uh, behind this big table, right? You all probably remember that, you're scary, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> So I remember, you know, Jim was asking questions. So, you know, what is action for you? What do you think about acceptance? And and that moment, I could really see that spark in the kids when they were answering the questions. And I was thinking, wow, who asks those questions, right? What is this? And and from there, that's what the process has been for us. It's been a process of questions. Hmm. And I think we learn to ask those questions and find the answers. The most important thing is where do you find the answers? You find the answers in yourself. And also what I felt is that you can change that. It's okay to grow, to mature, and to change your answers as long as they are coming from you and they are coming from your heart. So that's really what we have been learning here. As a Next year, Planning Brothers proposed budget. Now, it has not been passed yet. Our fiscal year is June, uh, July 1 to June 30. So the proposed budget will be around $350,000. That's what it costs us to do the program. So you take, take $350,000 divided by 80 six teens. We have 80 six teens in the program this year. Last year, we had 70. We've gone up by 16, which is crazy. And we're really, like, maxed out. I mean, we are maxed, maxed, maxed out with that. So when you take that, you divide it. What it actually is, per teen, is $4,069.77. Now, obviously, that's not the program fee. The program fee is $2,000. So to give you a sense of what that breaks down to, so at a budget of $350,000 for all of the business math fabulous people in the room, 
There is, um, we have the program fees plus the scholarship fund. Not all of our teens are on full, or paying the full amount, and, and that is great. We love that, we love that. That would equal a total of $172,000. So the leftover $178,000 is funded through individuals, fundraisers like Heartbeat, the Theater Experience, Night of Gratitude, products, the CD, the cookbook, the children's book, et cetera, et cetera, grants, foundations, and corporate. So that's how that works. That's how our budget works. We want to make sure we're being really transparent about that. Everybody understands. So to give you an idea of comparison, this was fascinating when I was doing this, absolutely fascinating. So if, if you were taking private piano lessons for 10 months at 20 hours total, it'd be $1,000, $50 a lesson, right? If you're doing tennis lessons, um, it's 10 months. Let's say you're doing it for 10 months. A total of 40 hours, it's $1,800, 45 a session. For a YMCA summer camp, it's one week, 80 hours total, $1,700, which is $21.25 an hour. For PFO, if you're an average teen, it's 10 months, 161 hours total. Teens receive 50 hours, or I think this year it's 49 hours at the leadership or at the annual retreat alone. That's 49 hours. At 2,000 is $12.42. For our leadership parents, if you are a parent of a co-chair, they actually put in a total of 244 hours. Now, another 50 of that is leadership retreat, right? Because it's like a four-day retreat. If you are a small group leader, it's even more than that, which means that that final number is less than that. And if you're co-presidents, it's probably like two cents an hour. <laughs> it's <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, and all of that is important, right? It's, it, it's a great way to give people a sense of, you know, what does this look like broken down by the hour in terms of direct contact hour? But more importantly is what your teen is experiencing during those hours. That's the key. So during those hours, your teen is experiencing a safe space of supportive, positive peers. That's huge. When I talk to parents over and over again, they're always talking about, who are my kids hanging out with? Who's their social group? That's really important at this age. You all know that. It's really important. And this group, safe, supportive, positive. They're practicing gratitude all the time, which is amazing. A dramatic, dramatic increase in self-confidence. For our returning teens, we have 50 returning teens this year. How many of you can, can self-report an increase in self-confidence, a dramatic increase in self-confidence? Every single one of them. It's unbelievable. The, the incredible adult role models, we get the best of the best. We really do. That's really important. The people who work with your kids are important. The teaching of four A's, attitude, acceptance, accountability, and action. Empowerment that Carlos was talking about, right? Self-awareness, responsibility, compassion, leadership, perspective shifting. It's a big one. Perspective shifting, team building, and much, much more. And then, of course, the power of giving back to others and being in service to the community. So... I am so proud that in the 13-14 season, 62.5% of our teens received scholarship dollars, either partial or full. And that's awesome. That's awesome. The um, way that we've given you a, a reference this year, if you're going to request scholarship support, is the, the YMCA model. So they say, and it's all in your packet, they say if you have, this is for one kid, if you have one kid, then there's this whole formula. I mean, it's a crazy, crazy formula. If you're making between this and this, that's the yearly amount, which that would be your monthly payment. And it's suggested. What we also understand is that you've got kids in college. You've got elderly parents. There are extenuating circumstances, which we completely understand. It's really important that everybody knows that we are a need-blind organization. You're sitting in here, and we've not asked anybody on what you can or can't do. Because that's not important to us. But we want to make sure that we're clear in terms of the fine line between paying what you can um, and, and having a guideline as to what that might look like for you, depending on your family circumstances. So to make that super easy, you can pay monthly, twice a year in July and November, or once a year in July. The scholarship fund is going to be supported. So essentially, if it's $172,000, right, is what we're doing, Whatever we do program fee-wise, the remainder becomes our scholarship fund. Does that make sense? Um, so that is funded by two main things, our annual campaign in November and then through major donors. PFO has been very fortunate. We, when people really hear our story and really understand the scope of what we're doing, it's unbelievable the support that pours out. Unbelievable. It's really amazing. 
So if you do an amount, any amount over the $2,000 program fee, if you are in a position to, to do that, if you have a family foundation, if you have ideas about that, anything over that is a gift and would be considered tax deductible. So the next steps around that um, discusses a family, what you're able to contribute, receive your job form via email, that'll be from Madison, uh, complete the information, the scholarship request, and then make that first payment in July. Again, it is so important to us that everybody understand it is one of our A's is acceptance, right? And that requesting this scholarship is, is important to us and important that we remain an open, accepting, diverse organization where everybody is welcome, regardless. And I love that about what we do. So um, it is clear the impact that PFO has on teens now in the program. But what's fascinating is where they are in a little bit. Um, and actually, one of our um, co-presidents from two years ago, it, I hope I can brag on you just for a second, is Leah Whitehead. She came tonight, she just got back from Indonesia. And um, Leah spent, so Leah was co-president last year, and um, was, uh, is it okay if I tell this part of the story, is that right? So Leah applied to Davidson College and got waitlisted. It's where she really wanted to go. It was, it was her envisioned life. She, she would absolutely love to go there. And it didn't happen. And so we talked about it, and it was, okay, what's the gift? Like, where is the gift in this? Where can we find the gratitude? And then it turned into, I want to take a gap year. And in the fall, I'm going to go to Spain. Well, first I'm going to do a whole European tour with my mom to all these art uh, art places. <laughs> art, you know, art places. Art go. Um, I didn't plan this part, can you tell? Um, <laughs> and then went and did an internship in Spain at a museum. Came back for a little bit. Oh, and while she was there, met this handsome fellow beside of her. What? Right? Who's from West Virginia, which is where I'm from, and they met in Europe. Like, that's crazy, y'all. What? I love it. So then, came back for a little bit. Sorry, Jess. And then, um, and then went to Indonesia to work in Indonesia, which is insane. I mean, just the kinds of things that our alumni are doing with the gifts and the, and the recognitions, the self-awareness and perspective shifting is unbelievable. So, um, I hope you're all having a fantastic night so far. My name is Anna Gappel. I'm one of the PFO interns, and I'm also an alumni class of 2011. Some of you may have noticed the scars on my arm. Did not. Um, they're not tribal art. They're actually a part of a story that I would like to tell you, and so to start that story, I'd actually like to tell you a little bit about myself from when I was a teenager. When I was in elementary school, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. I was put into learning support classes and grew up thinking that I was stupid. For me, thinking I was stupid stemmed a constant stream of negative thoughts. In middle school, I became ugly. In high school, I wasn't skinny enough and I wasn't cool enough and so on. And eventually, and unfortunately, those self-limiting and self-destructive thoughts turned into depression, which then led me to start cutting myself. To me, I wasn't deserving of good things. I just existed, and that was it. I got into playing for others my junior year of high school, and I think it's safe to say that it saved my life. I had finally found a place where I belonged and where I fit, and I was with other teenagers that were accepting of the things that I was going through and who loved me for me. I was supported and constantly reminded of the things that I actually was. Funny, loving, compassionate, smart, and most importantly, worthy of good things. Now I've been given the opportunity to come back and am able to help impact teens currently in the program the same way that I was impacted. Cutting is now a part of my past, but playing for others has given me the chance to turn something so negative in my life into something positive. I am able to use my experience and share with others and to let them know that they are not alone. Coming back to intern, PFO has completely changed my life again. I am still learning and I am still growing into the woman that I want to be and that's something I plan on doing for the rest of my life. Playing for others makes and allows me and anybody connected to the program to be their very best self every day. My name is Annie Gackle. I am hilarious, I am empowering, and I am still learning. My name is Jennifer Carol Band. I am courageous, I am compassionate, and I am connected. Ah, the power of words. You are amazing. You can do anything. I believe in possibility for you. You are safe. You are loved and you belong. You suck. You can't get anything right. Why do you bother? No one likes you. That was dumb. Who do you think you are? You will never be enough. 
Okay, so there's this guy, a researcher named Dr. Amoto, kind of like Amoticon, but not. And here's what he did. He took two containers of water. To one container of water, he said loving words, played positive music, and gave it gratitude, etc. feelings of love. To the other container, he said negative words, played music with harsh lyrics, and shared a not enough attitude, feelings of fear. When he froze both containers, here's what they discovered. The water that experienced feelings of love froze in symmetrical, snowflake-like patterns, beautiful and clear. The water exposed to feelings of fear froze in grotesque, dull patterns. What? Okay, let me break it down for you in case you didn't get that. Words of love, water frozen into beautiful, perfect symmetry. Words of fear or hate frozen into the opposite. So if our bodies are made up of 70% water, what does that mean? My niece Cameron came down last summer and Kelsey and I took her to Carowinds. Now Cameron is awesome. And here's one of the most awesome things about her. When Cameron says something funny, she says out loud, that was a good one, Cameron. High five self. <laughs> now how many of us high five ourselves? How many of us really get aware of what we're saying to ourselves, our thoughts? If I were to freeze your body right now, what kind of crystals would I find? If I were to freeze a stranger's body after an interaction with you, then what would I find? The power of words. Over the past year, I've spent a lot of time thinking about the words I am and what follows. I've heard teen after teen claim who they are and then step fully into that person. My name is Rudy and I am brave. My name is Ella, and I am kind. My name is Emily, and I am a role model. Time and time again, I have witnessed teens who will claim who they are. I am confident. But they may not necessarily feel confident in the moment. They are creating who they want to be. They are starting with the end in mind. And throughout the year, they step into the person who is. And that's all great. I mean, it's awesome. We celebrated it all last year. Way to go, power of words. High five self. But why is it so powerful? What is it really about? It's about how we want to feel. So close your eyes. Recall a time that you felt loved. Recall a time that someone said something loving to you. Imagine the sound of your own laughter. Open your eyes. We just shifted your crystals. High five, self. I know you think it's over there, but it's not. I probably ought to memorize it. Recently, I took a class where one of the questions was, what are your core desired feelings? At any given moment, right now, regardless of outside circumstances and conditions, how do you want to feel? For me, it's easy. It's joy, peace, and ease. And every day, I get to choose to feel that way. I get to accept or reject the self-limiting or self-empowering thoughts in my head. Jen, you are stupid. Your dreams are too big. A campus? That's crazy. These people are looking at you like you're crazy. They probably think you're crazy. And you know what? Maybe they're right. Maybe I should quit. Maybe I should do something else with my life. Something that isn't so hard, so challenging, so exposed, so vulnerable. Thank you, thoughts. Thank you for reminding me that I have the power to choose. I give you gratitude, and I send you on. So what are your core desired feelings? Safety? Freedom? Confidence? I feel joy when I see Jake run into the arms of Nick and Cole at the beginning of a buddy event. When Grace comes up and hugs me at the end of every event. When AJ completely comes out of his shell during the theater experience and blows everyone away on stage. I feel at peace when I hear Jackie warm up the dancers on the Booth Playhouse stage. When I sit in a room with Adam and watch him create music with teens. When I'm sitting on the deck of the lake house where we have leadership retreats, centering myself before the day begins. 
I feel ease when PFO is in the financial flow of abundance. When the staff Salsarita Fridays conversation is super fun and productive. When everything and everyone that comes our way does so without effort, without making, without forcing, simply allowing with an open palm. From the place of joy, peace, and ease, I create. I create the life I absolutely love living. And when I experience the intersection of all three, then I am connected. I am connected to the core of who I am. I am connected to that innermost part of me. And when I am first connected to me, my connection becomes so much stronger to you. Because you see, when I know who I am, when I am feeling joyful, peaceful, and easy, I am present with you. I am alive. I am filled from the inside out. I am in a state of authenticity and vulnerability. I am ready and eager to serve and give, not because I need it to feel good about myself or it's what you should do, but because I am in a constant state of overflow. When we are fully connected, we don't need other people to be a certain way. We can genuinely accept them for where they are and for who they are. Authentic acceptance. And from that springs authentic service. It's about connection. Connection is love and belonging, our most basic human needs. So let's get connected. Let's live lives full of connection. Let's create the life we would absolutely love living where connection is at the core. Connection through the gifts that we share with the world. Connection in every conversation and every interaction that we have. Connection to who we are and connection to the world around us. Let's get connected. My name is Jennifer Carol Band. I am courageous, I am compassionate, and I am connected. Who are you? And go ahead and freeze me. I am beautiful. High five, self. <laughs>